Welcome, everybody, to the Dark Asylum Podcast. I am the man, the myth, the legend, Darkness. And with me, as always, the flim flam, the jelly and the jam, the one, two, three man, the man they call Big Vicious. Wow, I'm impressed. Nice. <laughs> I've been practicing all day to sound as skeezy as Zach, so I had to, I had to do my best there. As soon as you started, I'm like, oh, that is the worst Zach impersonation I've ever heard. <laughs> but at least he's trying. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, I, you know. So, uh, what, what is it? Uh, mimicry is the, the sincerest form of flattery. So, right. that's why I was so shitty at it. But in case you haven't noticed, uh, Zach is not with us this week. He had to go and be responsible and have a damn job that needed him. So, he's slinging alcohol to alcoholics. And uh, we're sitting here doing a two-man show, so awesome times. Hell yeah. All so. right, so this will be our uh, last show of the year, and we that's, just got... That, that's... Oh, sorry, go for it, man. Fuck. I was going to say, that, that's a sad thing, but also a good thing. It means we uh, we survived a year. Yeah. I... Well, not a full year, but you know what? I, I think we, we've lasted longer than a lot of people would have. Yeah, this is true. I mean, I'm more than happy to get rid of 2020 after all the shit that's gone down. So, uh, Me too, me too. I, I just hope it wasn't a precursor to something worse and we're actually on an upswing this uh, 2021. <sighs> Fingers crossed, toes crossed. Shit. Yeah, yeah. It's It's been a hell of a year. And uh, so we're just going to start off on a depressing note because we want to get it out of the way so it doesn't bog us down for the rest of the show. But uh, we had uh, John Huber, also known as Brody Lee, also known as Luke Harper, pass away on us at the young age of 41. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, 41. It was. Uh, that's a really scary thing because... I'm 41, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, it, go ahead. Uh, yeah, that hit me too when I found out how old he was because I'm right there with you, man. It's like, oh, Jesus. We're getting to that point, you know? And what what's weird is, I mean, I don't know if anything else came out, but it was a un-COVID-related lung issue. Yeah. yeah it's, it's so, not COVID, but he had a problem with his lungs. But, like he was out there performing and like if he had some like underlying issue don't you think it would have been an issue like how quickly it just came on and all of a sudden he was gone yeah i i mean it, it was almost like chadwick boseman where nobody knew what was happening nobody heard anything i don't i mean there's not a whole lot of information yet that i know about uh, was there information out there that he had this issue or did it just come on and you know took him from us i don't know yeah, I, I don't know, and that's, that's what's scary, because, uh, I mean, me as a person that has lung issues, I know I know I have lung issues. Um, it's, who knows what's going to happen, like, one day I can just turn around and just, like, stop breathing. Yeah, yeah, that's a scary thing. I mean, I get winded out there in the, in the ring sometimes if I don't keep my cardio up, and, like, I feel like I'm having some lung issues, but... I mean, I can't imagine being out there and have some actual lung issues, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that was very, that, that, that was sad. It was uh, a shock. It just kind of like, I, I seen somebody post about it and I'm like, I, I scrolled by like whatever. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And I went back and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. No way. Yeah. It, it's getting to the point now where whenever I get on Facebook, which isn't very often, if I see somebody's face in a certain way, I'm like, oh, God, they died. You know, it's insane to just think that, you know, somebody that young is just gone. You know, he, he made the jump from WWE over to AEW, and he had, like, a pretty big story, you know. He had a big thing going on with being the, the Dark Order and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
but I mean, we hear about the legends passing away all the time. You know, Pat Patterson went this year and a few others, but it, this wouldn't have been one in, in uh, my celebrity pool, you know? Right. It's not one that you would expect or think of. And uh, I mean, Pat Patterson, it, sad, but it was, it wasn't a shocker. I mean, it's around that age, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you don't expect somebody at 41 just to die. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and unfortunately, with the wrestling business, it does happen more often than it should. You know, I mean, you get a lot of the guys out there taking drugs and, and having all kinds of heart issues. And, you know, they're in a hotel room somewhere or they're, you know, they got let go and then they just, you know, took too many pills or whatever the story is. But yeah, you know, he was still active. He was still, you know, working in and out every day and you know it just kind of hits you at a weird spot because you're like wait a second he was still like in the prime of what was going on for him no exactly it's it's sad um and, and speaking of that situation uh it, it kind of irked me when i started reading about a lot of people dogging on the wwe for not giving him a uh like a video package and stuff like that and um it's. I look at it this way: the WWE paid their respects to him. They they showed respects, um, their respect, and moved on. Where you know they could have just done nothing because he left them. You know, they actually do some kind of video package or something. No, for they, him or? no, they put up. They put up the. Uh, the the, uh, the little it, in memorandum thing. Yeah, in memory and because the year he's born. 2020 when he died and you know you know in memories of yeah i mean they showed their respects you know they didn't just like blow past it yeah i mean it the, the way that they treat people that have jumped over to aew i mean it's actually surprising that they did do something you know well that's that's what i'm saying um they could have just done nothing um and people got to remember it's it, it, this whole wrestling thing, and a lot of it has to do with the WWE. Um, there's like legal things, like playing, like because everybody has contracts and has the rights to people's, you know, visual and like na names and shit like that. Um, so it's like, what if what if WWE did put up a video package and AEW was like, "Yo, you're showing our man." <laughs> and yeah. I just I. Like I said, they they showed their respects. I mean, they could have done a video package, and that would have been great. Um, but I mean, they did they did more than what anybody would have probably expected them to do. Yeah, and it's interesting to see how independent wrestling almost has more of a heart and soul when it comes to these kind of things happening. I mean, we'll go out and we'll have our ten bell. And regardless for who it is, if it's from another promotion, if it's a legend, if it's, you know, someone from our own locker room, uh, tribute shows where we'll all wrestle for free and donate the money to the families or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we take care of our own in this business in a lot of ways that, you know, the big companies don't. I mean, we may be rivals with some other federation or company or whatever you want to call them out here, but they all get together and, and then all the boys will put on a show for somebody you right. know, to pay their expenses for whatever. When I mean, it comes down to something serious and, and personal, we, we drop whatever, whatever's going on and we cater to that situation, not to the, any rivalries or um, dislikes we have. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny because I always joke about the most money I ever made in, in wrestling in a, for a show was a show I didn't wrestle on. <laughs> it was for my tribute show when I broke my leg. <laughs> it was the biggest damn payday I ever had by far, and I was I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, but it my. was, I, I am forever grateful for that. I mean, you were a part of it, and, you know, Zach and a bunch of the guys at BCW put on that show for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, whatever was going on with politics in the back or whatever the story was, you know, that's, that will always be, you know, for as bad as it was for breaking my leg and everything, it was kind of like a, a high spot in my career that everyone would get together and do that for me. And I'm like eternally grateful for it. 
Oh yeah, it's it's definitely uh, there's more of a brother, there, there's more of a showing of a brotherhood in your indies than there is in the uh, big leagues. In the big leagues, you it's it's almost like you have to ask permission from your company to go to a funeral for somebody from another promotion. Yeah, yeah, I remember that when Owen passed away. Um, like Sting and stuff like that showed up. Mm. And, I mean, his brother was in WCW at the time, Brett. So it was one of those awkward situations where you had the two big companies coming together for a wrestler who was in another, you know. So yeah, they had a lot of crossover there, and it was kind of an interesting situation. But, yeah, so... It was a, he's a very agile big man. And I've, I've looked at some of his highlight reels that people have put together recently and he did some pretty crazy stuff for being as big as he was. So, you know, I mean, to most people who just be remembered forever after as being part of the, the Wyatt family, but you know, so much more to him. Oh yeah. <laughs> he, he was a lot more like I've. I found out a lot more about him when he went over to AEW um, because really I kind of dropped out of the um, like watching and following wrestling for a while. There was mm -hmm. just a point where I was like, I'm, uh, and when I found out he went by Brody Lee, I was like, that, that name sounds familiar. And I look back, I'm like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> like yeah. this, du this dude's more than just the, the bearded fucking hillbilly. Like, Oh, yeah. And it was interesting, too, because I think he did uh, Talk is Jericho right after he jumped. And it was nice to hear him just talk, you know, just like regular dude, nice dude. It seems like he, you know, was just real laid back about everything. And, you know, when he was with the Wyatt family, and that's all that a lot of people knew him from, he never really said anything. He never really, you know, but he got on that podcast and it was really cool to just hear him talk, you know, hear him be him. Right. But yeah, and uh, he's just, he had so much more to give, you know, but stuff happens and he just, you know, it sucks. He's got kids and you know, everything else, you know. Yeah, it, it was sad when, I, yeah, definitely sad when I heard about it. Uh, yeah, so uh, Brody Lee, Luke Harper, John Huber, uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace. All right, thank and, and where do we go from here? <laughs> Let's try and get uh, to well, something a little lighter. <laughs> well, no, we should we should um, at least finish off with the uh, one more sad note. Oh, you want to say the other one now too? All right, well, might as well, might as well since we're in the Debbie Downer right now. Well, we'll get it all out of the way and then hopefully. But yeah, we uh, also lost. This one was actually due to COVID, unfortunately. Uh, Marianne from the Gilligan's Island, Don Wells. Don Wells. I think, and I could be wrong, and I'm sure someone will correct us. <laughs> Sign guy. <clears throat> um, she was the last surviving cast member of Gilligan's Island. I believe so, yes. So, I mean, other than the monkey boy, Kurt Russell. I, bet. I mean, he was just there for one show. So. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Kurt Russell's still alive? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, pissing everybody off by not being polit political on uh, his face or his uh, Twitter or whatever and playing right. Santa Claus more most recently. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, she died at the age of 82. Yeah. It, um, COVID related, just, you know, 82. It's unfortunately, I mean, someone that old gets it. It's, it doesn't look good, but yeah. Like, so and this might be insensitive of me, but like I, I brought it up with um, Pat Patterson, you know, at this age of 82, like, if I was to go at 82, I, I would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean 80, 82, it's what our life expectancy is right about now is it 80s, you know. Now, unfortunately, going due to COVID-related injury or issues, who, who knows how that was? It, it, I, I don't think it was peaceful. Um, yeah. If, if anything's the way COVID is explained. Yeah, um, depending on the situation, like I said, this just came out, so I don't have a whole lot of information on it, but I don't know if there was a hospital stay involved or whatever the story is, but yeah, it's just sad news. But like you said, it's it might sound impersonal. I don't think it is, but they had a nice full life, Don Wells, you know? Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I, I do have to say as, as a 
as a young boy, um, Marianne was, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you were you a Marianne or a Ginger? Marianne. Marianne. Yep. Yeah, yeah that, that uh, country girl next door type. Uh, you know. Yeah. It. I. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Ginger was hot, but I. I think that whole Marilyn Monroe esque like attitude was kind of like one of those like, nah. It, it was as as a kid. It was you know. Marianne, it was like, yeah, I can get down. <laughs> I see the originator of the Daisy Dukes before Daisy Duke even wore them. You right. Know? <laughs> it's, it's like, come on over to my hut, Marianne. <laughs> you make me a banana cream pie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, but. She, she was hot. And like, um, I just recently, like, just found out she, she was in the uh, Miss American pageant. Um, she was Miss Nevada. In 1959. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, she That's... beat she beat out 350 other actresses to get the role of Marianne. Oh jeez, it's it's so like you see them. Okay, Marianne, we knew Marianne. She was you know, but then you get another one like uh, oh what the hell's her name? That's gonna screw me up now. The Golden Girl, the last remaining Golden Girl that we always like use as the measuring stick for people. Are, are are you serious? You you? I, it's just it. Uh, Rue McCallaghan, I remember. Betty, B. Arthur, Betty, Betty, Betty White, motherfucking <laughs> White. Betty motherfucking White. She is still around, man. <laughs> she, oh, yeah. Like, it's with her. I mean, Marianne, you told me that she was in, like, a beauty pageants and stuff. and But you look at, at Betty White in her early days. Good God, man. Yeah, well, as I said before, uh, Betty White's planning on staying immortal. She's going around taking all these people's heads. Yeah. She's like, there could be only one. <laughs> I think she is like the last remaining old school Hollywood, you know, celebrity personality around. Yeah. But uh, that's going to be a sad day because it's like, it's almost a meme at this point how long she's she's stuck around, you know? Mm hmm. That's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it, <Yeah>. Seriously. <laughs> Betty White is the measuring stick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just, God, so many people. I mean, I, I hate to do a year in review of the dead, but this is, you know, we, Sean Connery was another old school one. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just. Uh, this year, and I, I think, I, I think we noticed a lot more of the deaths this year because of everything else going on. Um, oh, yeah. And. It's just this year. This year was just a big fucking cloud that was like making everybody down and depressed. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it kills you, man. It's like so much stuff after so much stuff after so much stuff. You know, you get all the politics, you get all the celebrity deaths, you get all the the disease that's going around, you get all this. You know, it just kills you because it's like, when is it gonna stop? Let it go. Leave us alone, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't know. Do we need to go, like go slice our hand open and like drop it in some like circle for twenty twenty one to like accept us and like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's got to be some kind of mystical arts to it to make it get better, you know. But yeah, so many people lost this year, personal and public. Mm -hmm. Alex Trebek. You know, it's just, and it's just weird because it's mostly like people that you always think will be around. You know, <laughs> like I, Trebek was going to be doing Jeopardy until I died. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, like, man, I'm like, Jesus, like these people, they're 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 a fixture in your life, and you like, it's like surprised they're around as long as they were because you're like, man, I, I was. I was watching them when I was a like a kid. Like my grandma would always watch Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, and you're, you're, the hosts were always the same. Yeah, and the music and was there. So he was he he was no spring chicken back then. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Another. I mean, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, Good Eddie guy. Van Halen. You know, yeah. Chadwick Boseman. Those were young ones to me. I mean. Yeah. It just kills you. It's like, what? what's going on out there? But...
uh, is that all for the depression? Do we have Regis Feldman gone? <laughs> it's, I'm trying to think of all the ones. Grant Imahara? Oh my god. He's another young person. They went, Charlie Daniels? The devil went down to Georgia? My god, man. Carl Reiner's gone. Way uh, too many this year. Way too many. Joel Schumacher? I mean, the Lost Boys? Come on. I'll bring up Lost Boys as many opportunities as I get. <laughs> right. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's just amazing. It's just, just the original, just the original, because all the other ones sucked. No, I went into the other two with zero uh, aspirations, and I was—they were better than I was giving them credit for. They weren't is great. There, they weren't is good. There, but is there only two others? I thought there was like three or four. It's the tribe, and then there's uh, the third one. <laughs> I don't even. Yeah, there's like, there's like, I mean. Um, the, what's the one where they bring the Frog Brothers back? One's a vampire, one's... That was uh, at the very end of the tribe, I think. I think that was... I don't I don't remember, man. I, I watched it once, I was like, meh. But, you know. So. Watched it once, dug out my eyeballs. Yeah. But, you know. But, uh, let's jump into the big next thing that uh, I probably would watch once and then I'll be done with. This is the big one for this show. Wonder Woman 84. Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> I could tell by that breath you were probably as impressed as I was. So, I wouldn't... Okay. I was just having this discussion earlier with uh, somebody else. And, like, don't get me wrong. I loved... Uh, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, um, Justice League. I, I loved them for what they were. They, they weren't great movies, but they weren't horrible, in my opinion. My opinion only. Mm -hmm. um, was DC um, anywhere near being Marvel? Hell no. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then they made Wonder Woman. And I was like, holy shit. This could be the beginning of DC picking their shit up you know, tucking their balls back into their pants and running and, and making good movies and really enjoyed Wonder Woman. I fucking, I got a subscription to HBO Max just for this and <laughs> I turn it on and start watching it and I'm, I'm excited and that excitement just started dropping and going and leaving and I was done with the movie and I said, well, shit. There went my whole fucking big happiness that DC was going to pick up the ball and run with it. Um, it was... Yeah. It, I was hoping it would uh, be as good or better than the first one. But to me, it was basically the first one with a little bit of a different storyline. So basically, it was me watching the same movie with just a little bit of... Um, um, like different villains and stuff. She, the way I was explaining it earlier, um, she was very timid in the first one. Like she was just getting into her, who she was and, you know, figuring things out. And she was still, to me in this movie, very timid. And it's like, okay, like, where's the growth? Like, you have a second movie. I mean, we already seen your growth over in, uh, Justice League, where, where is it now? Yeah. Um, Jesus, where do I start? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through my story with this. I mean, you, you got oh. a subscription to HBO. To, one, one, uh, one more thing. No, go for um, it. Motherfucker needs to put a helmet on like he does in The Mandalorian because he's an ugly fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes some of the weirdest, goofiest faces. That I'm just, it makes it hard for me to uh, even take him serious. Pedro Pascal. That, yeah. <laughs> um, so I have not been to the movies since the last Star Wars, which was December of last year. Right. Um, I miss the movies. I love going to the movies. I go. I go on the cheap day. It was like five bucks. I don't even care what I was seeing. I just would go in just to go to the movies. I I love the movies since I was a little kid. We've talked about this before on the show. Mm -hmm. So. I am in Salt Lake City with my wife's family. My wife! And um, there's enough of us that 
the hundred dollar rental fee for the theater is actually advantageous for us. Uh -huh. So there's me, my wife, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and their four kids. So, okay. and as we're doing that, another one of her sisters um, is like, oh, we're in the area, you know, can, they joined us. So it was another four people. So amongst all of us, we, you know, we got, we rented out a theater for ourselves for Wonder Woman. I, I was like, I was so happy to be in a theater. I was like, yes, give me the collector's cup for Wonder Woman 84. Give me the collector's popcorn tin made out of real metal. Give me this. Give me the. And the, the prices were so low. It was like 20 bucks for all this stuff. I'm like, hell yeah. This is, why couldn't it be like this before? But then they're like, no refills, no this, no that. I'm like, all right, whatever. It's COVID. Yeah, I, at least I'm in the movie theater. All right. Right. So it, it's one of those nice ones with the reclining seats and everything else. So we go oh, in there. Shit. Yeah, it was, was kind of cool. So we go in there, and me and my, my wife sit next to each other. The kids and in-law, or my sister and brother-in-law, sit in the row behind us. And we're sitting there watching the movie, and their kids start, like, screaming and running around and being in, like, you know. If they weren't my family, I would have gone to see a manager. <laughs> it was like... And so they're getting bored, and I'm just, like, trying to focus on the movie. And the movie is just dragging and dragging and dragging and you know it it, it it was upsetting because like i was so looking forward to going to the movies and, and feeling normal again and then the movie was so terrible and then i i crushed one of my nephews under my reclining seat when i didn't realize he was underneath it oh <laughs> whoa <laughs> he, he was crawling on the floor and i kept telling him i was like go around don't walk in front of me come on man and I, he's he's young, you know. And then I lost track of him. He just disappeared. So I figured he went back the other way. I didn't realize that he dropped down to all fours and started crawling under our seats. And so oh. I, I push the button on the side, and my my leg rest starts going down. And then I hear this blood curdling scream. <laughs> and I'm like, oh Jesus! I just killed my nephew. <laughs> Did you hurry up, leave the body there, and take off? No, no. He, like I felt the struggle under my legs. I was like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, oh, no. They're going to hate me even more in this family. Oh, God, oh, God. So I hit the button, and the wheels come up, and he just like kind of like crawls away and then runs off like screaming. I was like, oh, God. So the, the movie theater experience was pretty much botched for the whole, the whole thing. But, from from uh, the movie to the, the disruptions to the... Yeah. So it so was the just, attempted murder of a child. Well, it was it was involuntary manslaughter at best, but still, um, yeah. And the well, movie, man. I, hold on, oh, darkness, God. darkness, darkness. What, what? You you can't tell me that this little kid was irritating the shit out of you, and you kept telling him to go around, and then when you were like, it, it fits. It, it sounds like you purposely did it, like. <laughs> No, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I did not try to murder this child. <laughs> but I, the movie itself, like, the I, we're going to go through spoilers. If you haven't seen it, I mean, you know, tune out now. We'll give you a five count. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So the, the beginning scene in the mall was fucking Three Stooges slapstick bullshit. Yeah. And for the first movie being so serious, the stupid shit that they did in that first fight scene, just, I tuned out almost it, right it, there. It reminded me of watching something like, um, fucking, uh, Liar Liar or, um, fucking, um, Spy Kids or something like that. Like the goofy little, um, yeah, it, it, should. Yeah. it looks like I was watching a fucking, um, a, a made, uh, a movie made for like eight year olds, like. Um, yeah, you, pu you put the criminal in there, but they're like, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. we better not do that. No, don't do that. Run. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that almost took me out of the movie completely. And uh, another big gripe I have about this movie is the first Wonder Woman pulled off a strong female lead without making every man around her rapist or a mentally challenged person this movie every fucking male character was a fucking scumbag or had a mental issue you know mm -hmm. every the all those criminals in the beginning were fucking morons 
the guys that that every other guy was like, "Hey, baby, hey, ba the, what the? F Everyone's a fucking drunken frat guy because it's the '80s or something. What what the hell is that? You know?" And that kind of pissed me off because, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a white man sitting sitting there watching, you know, other white dudes act like fucking dipshits, and I'm like, no, that's not how we are. What the fuck? So that pissed me off. And like, the only redeeming male character was Steve Trevor, and he just seemed like somebody had removed a big piece of his frontal lobe for the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Like he was almost on par with uh, with uh, fuck with Thor. When he was in <laughs> Ghostbusters, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, and you know, and there were so many things wrong with it. You know, the wish fulfillment <laughs> stuff. And Steve Trevor shows up in another dude's body, and she just bangs him. I'm like, okay, this is okay. All, all I see is you. Yeah, I mean, you know, if all I saw was Gal Gadot in someone, some other chick's body, and I did the same thing, I'd be in fucking trouble. Right. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Do I get to walk up and, like, you know, bang some broad and then, then get caught by, if I have a significant other, and be like, but babe, all I saw was you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I don't know, man. There was so many things that pissed me off about that movie. And then there were things that just, like, it was it was now, a lot longer than it should have been. Let me ask this. Let me ask this. Okay. Now, so, he's in another dude's body, right? Yeah. Would that be considered kidnapping? And on <laughs> the fact, and on the fact that he unwillingly had sex with Wonder Woman, wouldn't that be considered rape? Well, I mean, so we, yes. we just added we just added <laughs> rape and kidnapping into this whole. <laughs> I mean, it'd be it I, it would be yes in the most technical of terms, but I know the argument would be well, if Gal Gadot wanted to have sex with you, would you complain? You know, against your will. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. You kind of got me on that one, but still, you know, there was just and then and then Cheetah was like, "What the hell was that about?" Yeah, I I, I had a problem with that from the get go because I mean, her her as an actress, like she's. I've never seen her in anything serious, and I can't take her serious because everything she's in is very campy and goofy you, you you know yeah i mean i've seen her saturday night live bridesmaids ghostbusters and now this those are the big ones that i can remember i mean she's been in other stuff but but she it's always kind of like this goofy like so to see her try to be this like i want to be an apex predator i was waiting yeah. for her to do like the fucking uh <laughs> the uh, Randy Orton fucking <laughs> <laughs> puts like both fists into the ground before she runs up on somebody, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the there, was some, there was some good stuff, like you know, she pulls the refrigerator door off and everything. She's getting hours. You're like, all right, it seems like it's kind of cool, and then. She goes into that whole like it looked like fucking cats, like when they did that CG movie cats. Well, and that was the thing I was going to say the CG on it. Like, come on, we've come into like the, the world of like the CG has come so far along. Like, I mean, shit, you could have dropped a little extra money and did a better CG job, you know? Yeah, when video games have better computer graphics than this movie did, you know that's a you know an issue. But yeah, it just to from being one of the best DC movies in the new DCU to having the sequel being one of the worst, right? You know, and they've already gotten greenlit for a third one, so it doesn't matter how well this one does; they're not going to listen or pay attention yeah. or try to make another one because uh, make a better one because they already got fucking greenlit for the next one. Your 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 votes got boring, overhyped, corny. Overrated, forgettable, cringeworthy, slow, yeah, <laughs> unconvincing, um, plot uh, holes. It, it's just people are just picking it apart, and I don't blame them really. Um, my God. like I said, dude, I was loving. You know, we went Wonder Woman, sh Shazam. I was like, dude, we're going to like dc is going to start like competing against marvel man we're going to have some decent movies like yeah. better movies like i said the other ones are decent to me but we're going to have some like actual like hell yeah movies and then 
they turn around with Wonder Woman 84 and totally. It, they were on an upswing for a while there because you got, you got the original Wonder Woman, which was great. You got Aquaman was su surprisingly decent, you know. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add uh, uh, Aquaman in there, yeah. Yeah, and then Shazam, which, you know, it was one of those things where you had no aspirations for it. But then, hey, this is actually pretty good, you know. And then they drop Wonder Woman 84 and it just... It sucked, you know, and they're going to have excuses and everything else because it wasn't in a theater and it wasn't this and it wasn't that. So, but it was in a theater. They, they, they gave the opportunity for it to be in theaters, but there's no theaters around. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, they, they could come up with all the excuses they want. They had plenty of time to work on it, fix it, make it better. And they just totally fucking dumpster dived it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they just, it was a dumpster fire full of shit. <laughs> but. but speaking of DC, um, they're actually going to have two Batman movie franchises running simultaneously. Uh, okay. I mean, I know of, of Patterson's And Batman. Ben Affleck. Oh, Ben Affleck's been confirmed again. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're going to have Ben Affleck be the um, actual more... Um, the DCU and yeah. Patterson being more of the um, side or multiverse type uh, Batman. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people don't like Affleck as Batman. I, you know, I, I don't mind Ben Affleck. I think his Batman is pretty decent. So... You know, I'm more willing to see what happens with that one. But with all the shit that's plaguing the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, Ugh. I don't know. There's way too much going on with it, man. Yeah, I mean, now there's there's problems supposedly between Pattinson and the director. Mm -hmm. And, you know, COVID played a big role in it getting delayed and everything else so it may be just falling apart in front of us and we might not even see this new Batman you know which is a shame because it actually looked really good from the previews I think we're going to see it but if anything it's not going to be um, completed the way it should be it's going to be rushed to just get it done with it could be one of those situations where they just send it out to die you know, like with New mm -hmm. Mutants, where they're like, we don't know what to do with this, but, I mean, we filmed it, and it's, it's there, so we may as well put it out, you know. Right. Um, see, me, yeah, when I heard Ben Affleck was going to be Batman, I went on a, a Zack rant. Like, you know, if you, if you ever want to see me imitate Zack, that would have been the time, because I probably was spot on. Dude, like, you could not get me to shut up. I was boisterous. I was pissed. Um, I saw the petition to the White House to um, take Ben Affleck off the project, and I signed it. And I don't sign petitions, but I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, Ben Affleck can't even play Ben Affleck. This dude, I just, I did not like him. And um, I, I threw the biggest fit, and they, he was still going, he was still going. And then I saw some set photos, and I'm like, all right, he kind of looks like Batman, but he still can't act for shit. Fuck this dude, you know. May lightning strike the building, and he dies in a burning fire. I don't care. <laughs> and then you start seeing, like, trailers and stuff, and you're like, all right, well, you know, he's a little bit convincing. He, he looks pretty good, but you know what? He's still been out flack. Uh, fuck, maybe I'll give it a try. <laughs> then yeah. the movie com movie comes out, and I'm just like, holy fucking shit. Like, he was great. Like, to me, he was great. He wasn't the best Batman. Uh, I'll never put him as the best Batman. But he was a great Batman for what he was, uh, that time frame and what they were trying to do. Yeah. It, it, one of the things is I never understood the hate for Ben Affleck. I know I know it's out there. I Believe me, I've heard so much stuff. But I grew up with, with Kevin Smith movies, and he was the asshole in Mallrats, uh -huh. and then Chasing Amy, and then Dogma. And so I enjoyed him in all those. And he's had other movies that I like. You know, Armageddon, he just played, you know, a meathead kind of character. But, you know, it, it was fun and enjoyable. So, you okay. know. 
but they weren't his movies. They were just him. Yeah. He was, he was just a character in the movie. Um, he was just, you know, he was that character that's there that, yeah, I mean, he played those roles, right? Because they're stupid comedies. They're, they're, they weren't masterpieces. They weren't works of art. They weren't like something serious. Yeah. But so I mean, he fit the role. Now I did like him in stuff like, um, what's that movie? Paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, reindeer games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there are some movies he's, he started like, you know, growing on me a little bit, but then I think just him being Batman, like hit that twinge and I forgot about any movie that he did halfway decent, <laughs> you uh, know? Yeah. It was just like, no, fuck you. You're not Batman. Um, and he surprised me. Um, he really did. And I'm, I was pleased with what I saw. Yeah. See, I'm I'm one of the sixteen people that actually like Daredevil, the movie with Ben Affleck. I so, didn't mind it. I mean, <laughs> hell, I mean, people are probably going to shoot, shoot me for saying this. I didn't hate Green Lantern. I didn't think it was the greatest thing in the world, and I, it's not one of those movies that I will pull out and watch um, more often than maybe once or twice a year. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I didn't hate it. I, I didn't think it was the greatest thing in the world. But I didn't hate it. It it gave me a live action Green Lantern, which yes, disappointing. But at the same time, it was a live action Green Lantern. <laughs> hey, sometimes you just gotta take what you can get. I think that's a lot of the reason why I like the first Daredevil movie because it was one of the first comic movies, and I was like, holy shit, Daredevil, you know. But yeah, and that that was my thing with Daredevil. I didn't, I didn't hate it. Um, I, I now hate it once we got the TV series because that's way better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm joking. But yeah, um, Daredevil wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was um, somewhat enjoyable. Um, it's just like I don't think I don't think there's a superhero movie out there that I, well now Wonder Woman I, like yeah Wonder Woman <laughs> two I. I probably don't. I, I don't. I don't know if I can find a way to like it. Um, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But um, Fantastic Four and Fan Fantastic Four Two: Rise of the Silver Surfer. I didn't mind them. I somewhat enjoyed them. Yeah. Okay. What about I, the I, one I, after that? Though? Yeah. Fuck that one. <laughs> Fanforstic. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was so many things wrong. Like, how are you going to take Doctor Doom and turn him into a hacker? <laughs> um, yes, that was how one is, of many things wrong with that movie. <laughs> how are you going to turn Johnny and Sue um, into stepbrother and stepsister? Like, I, I know a lot of people were pissed uh, because before you found out they're step siblings, it was like, how is one dude black and the other one's white? Why are they turning him black? And I'm like, I don't care that they're, they're turning him black. Mm -hmm. Make make Sue black too. Make him make him. A black family, and, yeah. But make them brother and sister, not step siblings. Hey, that that's one of the things with Fantastic Four that it's Fantastic Four is all about family, yeah. And they have a bond being brother and sister. They got through their parents' deaths. They got through the their father coming back. All this stuff in the comics because they were brother and sister, mm -hmm. and it kind of ruins that dynamic. But. You know? And then, they're all related. They're 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 like a makeshift family, you know. Mm -hmm. That's and that's that's what I'm saying. I don't ever mind when they take a character and uh, like change different things. Um, well, I, I can't say never. There's sometimes that it does bother me, um, just because. But um, you know, if you're going to take a character and make them black, it, it don't bother me. It, it's as long as that character is true to what that character was, if you have to start changing everything that character was to fit now because it's a, a, a black actor or actress playing it, then I'll start having issues because it's like, why are you recreating a character that you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't recreate? Yeah. You're making a movie about um, Superman. Don't turn him into a, a, a gay Russian, and now you have to change his whole backstory 
to make this movie. It's like, no, like, why? Hmm. Um, so it's one of my perfect examples in the TV show Supergirl. Oh, yeah. Did it have an issue with Jimmy Olsen being black? I had an issue with Jimmy Olsen being a tall, bald, suave, good-looking black guy who <laughs> was um, not timid and was running into the face of danger. That's the issue I had because Jimmy Olsen was not uh, a suave, good-looking, fearless guy. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, that's quite essentially what you're saying, man. That, that's, that's the thing that bugs me the most. I don't care if they race change. I don't care if they... If it if it makes sense and if the character is still essentially what we know them for, then yeah, mm -hmm. you know. But it's yeah. like Perry Perry White and um, Man of Steel being Lawrence Fishburne. Um, I didn't have a problem with that because well, the only problem I had was Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne's a very monotone guy when Perry White was more of a um, high strung, almost like a J. Jonah Jameson, but I'm um, toned down a bit. Yeah, like, like screaming and yelling at people so and stuff. So Perry White was J. Jonah Jameson on Ritalin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, toned down a bit. <laughs> but, uh, like, I didn't have a problem that they made him black. You know, um, and I, I mean, he, I just wish he was a little more, like, high strung, um, like all the other, you know, Perry Whites. But um, I, I had no problem with it. It, it was a character, and Lawrence Fishburne, for what it was, did pretty well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got no issue with that Perry White. It was, you know... I, I, I'm not that vested in Perry White, but, you know... <laughs> I, I, how dare they? How dare they? You know, I wasn't... But the Jimmy Olsen thing with Supergirl, yeah. I mean, that, that made damn sense, and... Mm -hmm. You know, but... Don't do it just to do it. Do it, and do it well. You know, just because you did it doesn't mean you, you, you're you get the accolades or you get, you know, special whatever kudos for doing it, do it and do it well, mm -hmm. you know? So, but, you know, we got Wonder Woman 84 and it's something that we were all looking forward to. And now it's just kind of like, you, you yeah. got one, you got Wonder Woman 84. I got a big pile of garbage, but anyways, Oh, well, I got, I got collector's cups and popcorn tins that are going to collect dust. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You got a constant reminder of your horrible experience. <laughs> Dude, like I said, man, I was just so excited to go to the movies again. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. I think, I think that would have been worth it. Uh, going, the, even though it was a crappy movie, I just think the theater experience, I miss it. I haven't, 20, I have not been to a theater in 2020 at all. And it's like, fuck, I knew when a few of the theaters reopened up before we went into um, our second lockdown. I, I knew I should have gone before they started, you know, before it shut down. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, see ya, we're out, peace, goodbye, we're closed. Did, did that, okay, because we live right next to each other pretty much. Did the theater at the mall ever reopen? The theater at the mall didn't, no. The one okay. right here, yeah. no. They stayed closed. Yeah, I, I, the uh, the one down in Oregon City, I think that one opened up again, but then, you know, that was gone, so. Uh, yeah, it, it, we got theater tickets. I know this is going to be, you know, my wife loves, and I, I don't mind theater. I like theater too, but the Oregon, whatever it is, uh, Performing Arts Center, where they have like a, a, a pass. Uh -huh. And there's been tons of those that like, they just don't do them now. It's they, Everything's been closed down. Like all our entertainment and all of our escapism has either been locked away from us or had bullshit politics shoehorned into it yeah we have no release this this is my, my release coming over here once a week and shooting the shit with my friends that i can't see in person right <laughs> it's like and we started a fucking podcast to keep ourselves from going insane basically pretty much it's just to try and feel normal for an hour or two <laughs> but just trying to feel normal <laughs> Locked up in the goddamn house, you know. But <laughs> oh, speaking of uh, locked up in the house and trying to feel normal, um, how was your Christmas? 
Uh, Christmas was good. Christmas was good. I uh, was in Salt Lake City. We left Christmas morning, uh, got on a plane, and flew out to Salt Lake to be my wife's uh, sister, and, well, my sister-in-law. Um, it was fun. It was, it was nice to see little kids opening Christmas presents and stuff like that. It, you got a little bit of joy out of seeing them happy, and it was you know, not a total loss. So. Right. And we didn't even put up a tree here this year. It was just, we got so much stuff going on, personal, that, you know, it's kind of a downer. But she, my wife was happy, and I was happy seeing her happy, and the kids happy. And we did a bunch of stuff out there. It was nice. I mean, we went to an aquarium, and we oh, ordered nice. tons of fucking junk food that we shouldn't have eaten. And, you know, we I learned how to play Among Us, which is pretty cool. So, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I haven't really fully dabbled into it, but the little bit that I played, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. Now we get calls. Can you guys play Among Us? And my nieces, my niece and nephews are like, you know, they get their iPads and everything, and we we drop in on, or they drop in on us on uh, the uh, Alexa, and <laughs> we sit there and talk to each other, and we all run around stabbing each other and Among Us. So that yeah. was kind of cool, and you know. So it wasn't a total loss this year, which is good. And my wife and I had Christmas here before we actually left. And so, nice. we, yeah. But how about you? How was your Christmas? It was a day off. Um, we uh, we did Christmas here on Christmas Eve because just everybody's scheduling and um, one of the kids going to their dad's and the other one working and. Um, we just did it Christmas Eve. We uh, we decided to do a Chinese buffet dinner instead of uh, a traditional dinner, and <laughs> we 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 didn't get to eat till like one thirty in the morning. So actually, technically, we had Christmas on Christmas. <laughs> oh, nice! So where where did you go for the buffet? Uh, we it was made. That's oh, why you guys took, did it. Oh, okay. That's why it took forever. Um, it's uh. You know, when you, when you go to cook uh, a Chinese buffet like a, a Chinese restaurant um, and don't have the equipment that a Chinese restaurant has, you, you don't realize that it's going to take hours upon hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were talking about Chinese buffet, and the first thing that came to mind was Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're always open on Christmas. It's, it's kind of funny. Well, um, and that was the thing. We kind of went to do something... Um, different just because it's everybody has their thing they're doing like either having to work or going somewhere else or whatnot so it was like you know let's do something different so it's kind of like the the chinese buffet that we, we, we kind of took a little inspiration from there you know um but yeah it, it was it was fun but it was kind of like oh my god like why who wants to eat dinner at one thirty at night <laughs> oh yeah jesus man it but thankfully, we, we, we snacked on the stuff throughout the day, like um, little things as they came out. So, I mean, it's not like we starved or anything. Yeah. The uh, last thing I did on Christmas uh, was see Hans Gruber drop out of a building. Yep. So, we uh, 11.45, the movie ended. I was like, all right, I got it in just before the end of Christmas. <laughs> I, actually, I actually watched it on Christmas Eve. Which is good as well, you know. I watched that in Lethal Weapon. Yep, I got I got my wife to watch uh, Lethal Weapon for the first time that she remembers. I thought we watched it before, but she doesn't remember it. So, is that a Christmas movie? I say so. Oh, hell, it starts with Christmas music. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're, it's a, they're strangle each other with Christmas lights and shit. That's that's a Christmas movie. <laughs> I mean, hell, uh, fucking, uh, he's buying fucking dope in the center of a Christmas tree lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I'll fucking... take the I'll take the whole thing. How much? A hundred. Okay. One, <laughs> two, three. What are you doing? Oh, hold on. You made me lose count. I'm counting a hundred. No, that's a hundred. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I, that was one of the first action movies I was exposed to as a kid. And, and Martin Riggs is one of my favorite characters. Martin Riggs and Axel Foley. And if they ever had a crossover movie, I swear to God, I'd lose my fucking mind. Axel Foley. Uh, I love Ax that Beverly Hills Cop. The, the first one is one of my favorite movies of all time. And luckily, I mean, we just got word that 
Uh, it's kind of bittersweet, but Lethal Weapon 5 is coming, mm -hmm. which is good. And on an unfortunate sad note, it will be Richard Donner's last film. Yep. He's throwing in the towel after Lethal Weapon 5. And how they got Lethal Weapon 5 going with everybody is still a mystery to me because, well, you know. Well, not, not everybody's hating uh, Mel Gibson right now, remember? Yeah, I mean, you know, I know what Mel Gibson said was bad, and I'm not. He's he's paid his penance, and you know he's if he's sorry and all that. Donald Danny Glover's like, yeah, let's do it. If Danny Glover's okay, and then I'll be like, okay, you know, yes, it was terrible what he said, and you know, it sounded like he was drunk or on drugs, and I'm not saying that's an excuse, but you know, I don't know. It'll be nice to see Riggs and Murtaugh back together again for one last outing and Richard Donner's last movie, so. Yeah, like, I, so, Lethal Weapon, like, here's the thing, excuse me, um, I, I think each one just got better as it went along, mm -hmm. um, there's some movies like, okay, you got Die Hard, I like, I love Die Hard, um, Die Hard 2, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a good movie, uh, you know, Die Hard 3, that's, uh, the one with Sam Jackson, right? Yeah. Die Hard with a Vengeance. I love that one. I love, <laughs> I love that, that one. one too. It was they took a character that you love and they they changed it up enough because it seemed like part two was just a rehash of the first one. Exactly. But the third one, they took the character that you love with John McClane and they put him in a different situation, and it was it was entertaining, you know. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I enjoyed and the third one a lot. But then you uh, then you go into. Um, these other ones a I, good, I good day to die hard <laughs> so, and then it's just like uh i'm done with you like go away you know yeah. um but i mean we only had four lethal weapons but they got better as they went like like wine dude and then i just the fourth one i love it because it's like you i want to say grew up with these guys but you went through their careers with them as they're going, and now they're like these old men, and like uh, they're, they're still at the same um, craziness that they are throughout the other movies, but you, you see it's taking a toll on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Martin Riggs being like a, a, they explained it in the first one, he knew all these martial arts and stuff like that, and then they put him up against Jet Li, who was like introduced to American audiences for the first time. Right, and he got his ass handed to him, which you know, de deservedly so. He's old, and he's going up against fucking Jet Li. So you know, it's it made sense. The characters evolved as the stories went. You know, like they're settling down, and like you know, I mean, Murtaugh was ready for retirement in the first one, but <laughs> you know, it would be interesting to see what they do with the fifth one, see where the characters evolved to. So right. But yeah, I mean Richard Donner though is is giving us some of the best movies. You know, I Goonies forgot like that was my growing up movie. That and The Lost Boys, which I got another mention for The Lost Boys in. So let like, <laughs> me mark that down one more time. But fucking Goonies, man. I mean that's half the reason I moved to, to fucking Oregon. <laughs> I thought it was like that all the time. You but, were hoping to run around and fuck yeah, I don't get fucking. One Eye Willie's treasure. <laughs> All right, that didn't sound right. I'm glad Zach's not here. <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> yeah, but you're a little more courteous than Zach, so. But he's all, oh, I got One Eye Willie's treasure right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, damn it! Um, right. th that should be the uh, title of the show. <laughs> one, -eyed, one eyed Willie Treasure. <laughs> I was looking for One Eyed Willie's Treasure. <laughs> I moved here to find One Eyed Willie's Treasure. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah, I mean, it's good to see, like I said, another lethal weapon. Hopefully they do it right. But with Donner on board, I'm, I'm, I have high hopes. But, I mean, Richard Donner gave us basically the first big superhero movie of all time with Superman. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen the, the Richard Donner cut of part two, find it. It's an immensely better movie than what you actually got. So, uh, yeah. 
I, I, well, I mean, Superman 2 was more of a kid movie, but his cut was yeah. more serious. No, most definitely. Uh, to say it was better... Um, grow, when you grew up, like when we, we're older now and we see it, and it's we can say, yes, it's a, a better movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But watching it then when it first when we first got it, I, I couldn't say better. It was, um, I think Superman 2 is actually what made me fall in love with the Superman movies. Mm -hmm. um, although I saw the first Superman, which was good, Superman 2 was my my favorite for the longest time. And yeah. then when I, got, when I got older and actually learned how to um, somewhat um, respect and you know, uh, look into the actual art of the movie instead of just what the movie is. Then, yeah, I understood more. So, it's funny because growing up, Superman three was my favorite, <laughs> and that is regarded as almost the worst Superman movie ever. <laughs> no, the fourth one's the worst. <laughs> See, I like the fourth one too, but you know, looking at it through kid eyes. I, he had a fucking villain to finally fight that was, you know, different. You know, Solar Man. Right. But I didn't. I didn't hate him or shit on him like everybody else did. But sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, it's good. Go for it, man. Yeah, like I said, I didn't. I mean, they're decent. Um, I, I wouldn't say they were great, but um, I kind of like uh, the third one where he ends up fighting. It's. Clark Kent versus the drunken Superman. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Richard Pryor makes this, uh, tries to imitate Kryptonite, but it does something completely different to him. Yeah. Um, it turns him evil or turns him into an asshole. <laughs> right. And then he ends up uh, fighting himself and becoming whole again, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then that weird robot at the end. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. The goo thing. It's a. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the whole the, the whole Superman video game. <laughs> uh, fucking Superman. Um, and then you know the fourth one. Uh, it was interesting with the, uh, you know the nuclear man. Um, he brought back back Lex Luthor. Um, yeah, you know, but when it came to the fourth one. Uh, if if I was to dislike, if, if I had to rank like out of the four because I, I don't consider Superman Returns a movie. Um, How dare you? No, I'm I'm sorry. It, it grew on me a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, after right, watching just, it again, just uh, I just want to say real quick about Superman Returns. You know, as much as we all hate him now, Kevin Spacey was a great Lex Luthor. Oh yeah. All right. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, he he plays a great. Um, that was the only thing that was good about the movie um, originally. But, I mean, I, I think it was after watching Brandon Roth play uh, The Kingdom Come Superman. Mm -hmm. it, I was like, okay. And I went back and I, I, I gave it a try again. I'm like, okay, this movie isn't... And then that's as far as I could go. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> give it any compliments. Yeah. But... Um, I just, to me, it was like, okay, uh, so Lois Lane has a kid. It's Nobody knows who the father is, but hey, we know who the father is. The kid sneezes and fucking the piano crushes the dude, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, so they, they bone once. This is 10 years after the fact, and all of a sudden, like, if, if that was real, Lois wouldn't be alive. The, the kid yeah. would have been an orphan. <laughs> like, I, well, how's it go? Is uh, I guarantee you he blows a load like a shotgun through her back. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. So it, it's supposed to be when Superman gave up his powers in the second movie that he boned Lois and she got pregnant. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. So. Like, did she not find that weird? Like, did she not, like... Like, I'm pregnant? Like, she's not the virgin fucking Mary. Yeah. <laughs> that, even, that though, was... even though Superman is the Jesus algorithm, but, you know. <laughs> right. 
But that's one of the things that irritated me. And then the fact that somebody constantly had to save Superman from something throughout the whole movie. Like, Superman was constantly being saved. Yeah. I was yeah. like, that's ridiculous, okay? It was very uncharacteristic of Superman. And a, a lot of things in that movie were. And a, one of the things that kind of pissed me off was let Brandon Routh play Superman the way Brandon Routh wants to play Superman. Don't don't hire Brandon Routh and say, hey, you're going to be Christopher Reeve playing Superman. So basically emulate Christopher Reeve yes. as, as Superman. I'm like, it, you know, I, it could have been a totally different movie if they would have just let him do his thing. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's got the chops. He's got you know, it, it would have been a different Superman, but I think it would have been a lot better than him just imitating Christopher Reeve. Right, and that's the thing. They, they were trying to imitate Christopher Reeve way too much, and I don't think it did a. Uh, it wasn't a tribute to Christopher Reeve. It was almost more of a slap in the face and a, and a, um, a shit in the bag type of thing. You know, yeah. They should they should have just you know continued on and then said in memories of Christopher Reeves or something like that. But um, the, the one thing that I really did like about the movie, and um, I would find this clip on YouTube all the time just to rewatch it, um, I think they did a good job at making him not um, the most powerful thing in the world where he could stop something with just like one finger. Mm -hmm. So he had to struggle with that rocket or the, the jet. So he frees the rocket and he has to struggle with the jet, rips off the wing. But I, I like, and then he, you know, fucking hits the nose of the plane and it like starts caving in around him. And, you, you know, he slows it down until he gets on the baseball field and sets it down. Awesome. It shows that Superman's not the, he, he can't just like fucking most powerful thing and just like stop a, a whole planet from crashing down on you. Yeah. But I love the part that Lois is bouncing around that fucking plane. Like she, she's getting <laughs> thrown around. Like <laughs> she, she's up on the ceiling, up against the wall. She's like struggling to look out the window, and she sees her, her dream man fly by, rips off the wing, and she's bouncing around. She finally climbs into the seat to get oxygen on. I'm like, yes. <laughs> That's funny, all the repercussions if he were to actually use those powers in real life, you know. <laughs> it's like he stops the train, and then all the people on the train go flying forward into the, the engine compartment. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess Superman Returns, I wouldn't consider. I don't know. Uh, it, it's growing on me, but, you know, Superman 4. <sighs> Solar it Man. Yeah, they could have made Solar Man a little better. Yeah. And I think it would have been made the movie a little bit better. Um, Another mean, thing about that, I hate when they shove in comic relief characters that are annoying as fuck. Right. So they shove in Lex Luthor's nephew. I'm like, what the fuck? Even as a kid, that guy wasn't funny in that movie. So, fucking Ducky. What the hell? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it that... Uh... What? It's Ducky. It's what? <laughs> Ducky from Sixteen Candles. Ducky. John Cryer. Uh, I know, but um. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, what's? <laughs> I was just verifying before I uh, actually said it. He went on and he plays Lex Luthor in the Supergirl. Yes. Yes, he does. Which is, he actually does way better in that. Because I've seen a couple clips, but I guess, it's, you know, he was at the very end of the show because it's ending. But has it ended or is it going to end? I don't know. I believe they canceled it. Um, yeah. I think but... I think they're going to have her, because um, they're bringing out um, Superman and Lois. Yeah. That comes out February. Mm-hmm. So um, I think... Uh, she is going to be a part of that, and I believe he is still going to be uh, Lex, but from a... I, I don't know. I read something. I, I, I can't remember if they said he was like an alternate Lex, or if uh, he was actually going to be Lex, like um, the full-on Lex, but... Mm. 
he he did do a bad job. I I was actually surprised. Yeah, like I'm I'm watching uh, Two and a Half Men right now. I'm almost done because it's on Peacock and it's for free for me. So I got the right cable company. But it's going to be interesting because I'm going to go after I finish the show and watch that of Lex Luthor, and I'll be like, you know, you you get the preconceived notion of Ducky. And then right. you got his nephew, Luther, when he was in Superman 4. And then you got, you know, the character that he played in, in Two and a Half Men. And then to see him play a decent Lex Luthor, you'd be like, all right, this, he's got some range on him. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it doesn't surprise me, but it surprises me that I did not realize that he was, uh, you know, fucking the nephew in Superman 4. Yeah, <clears throat> turning around to play Lex later on. Yeah, which is actually cool. Cool kind of. I don't want to say it's stunt casting, but in a way, it is. It makes people want to watch. You're like, what? Let's see how he does. You know, and then he mm-hmm. actually pulls it off, and you're like, oh fuck, you know. Yeah, that's why when we were talking about it, we're like, yeah, we had it comic relief, and I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd speak it. I'll go back to Wonder Woman eighty four real quick. Um, mm-hmm. What did you think of the stinger scene? <laughs> okay, I guess nothing about that movie was redeeming for you. Not really. Okay. I, I, I'm actually going to watch it one more time. I, I don't think it's going to change my mind, really. But I want to I want to get something out of it. And I want to get some feelings and be like, okay, this is cool. I just think I was, I, I was so disappointed. Um... And it just kept disappointing me that I don't think I took in or really cared about anything else about the movie. Yeah. I, I, I just barreled through and let it finish. And once it, once it was done, I was like, peace out, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah. It was, you know, I mean, I, I always wait for those the movies, the comic book movies especially, for something at the end. And uh, anyone who hasn't seen it, you probably aren't listening anymore. But, I mean, the Stinger scene... The, the gold armor that she gets in the movie is from Asteria, who is like this big badass, you know, goddess from back in the day. And give you a stinger <laughs> scene at the end that has uh, Linda Carter as Asteria. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was kind of cool, a little homage, you know, the old Wonder Woman TV series. Yeah, I mean, I I was just like, huh, cool. And I was just, I was just, I was done. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you would have had, um, Ben Affleck's Batman, or any of the other Batman movies, okay? They have the Court of Owls or something like that, and they have Batman's father return, or they have an alternate version, and it's fucking Adam West. How much would you have lost your shit for that? Right. It would have been a different <laughs> kind of, you know. But, you know, with the movie being so bad, it kind of falls on deaf ears that they brought back Linda Carter for a little scene. Right. But, you know, so... And it's, like I said, it's not that I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I was, like, meaning this, sh- like, shit on the whole end. Because even my kid was like, dude, that was awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's nothing awesome about this thing at all. Except for the fucking, the color of the title. The only thing awesome about this fucking movie was the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, God. Such such disappoint <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So we got uh, sticking with comics here. Did you read the comic book book club? I read most of it. Yes. Okay. What did you think? Because this this was Zach's recommendation, so I'm assuming he already read it. I, I'm assuming he did too. <laughs> yeah. What did what did uh, you think of him? Interesting. I, I was really into the art. The the art was. It, 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 it was like that creepy, uh, I always have a hard time trying to explain what the art is. It was, it was, it was a creepy art. It, yeah. it gave that feel, it gave that feel of what the story was. Um, the story was interesting. Um, it's, I, I just don't think it was, it, it, I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish because I, I didn't get to finish all six. Or what mm-hmm. was there? 
It's five. We, we read the first five issues of Baby Teeth, in case you guys... Baby are Teeth. Yeah, sorry. In. Yeah. Uh, Baby Teeth. Uh, so I, I have one more to read. I didn't get fully through. And I think after that, I I might pick it up later, but I don't think it's one that I'm going to continue reading. Yeah. Well, the, the fifth issue has uh, introduction of a new character that's actually pretty interesting, but I won't spoil it for you, because, you know... Okay, well, then with that then i might who knows um yeah i i don't know this one <clears throat> excuse me sorry like i really uh out of his suggestions before i really loved uh what was that hillbilly or uh which one uh, the one previous that he did the uh, hillbilly vampires oh yeah um rednecks rednecks like yeah. i really liked that i was like yeah this yeah. one, you know, you, even though it's in that horror genre that I like, it, I, I still, it wasn't, I wasn't feeling it fully. Yeah. I, it, what, basically what the premise of the story is, is this girl gives birth and the baby's a little weird and it, uh, just a little, yes, just, just a little. Yeah. Well, as she's giving birth or having contractions, there's like major earthquakes happening and there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. She has the baby and it won't drink milk and then one day it starts getting these little needle teeth and it latches onto her and just basically starts drinking her blood so whenever something weird like that happens there's like groups out there looking for these things these signs and they basically labeled the child the antichrist and they send assassins out to kill the baby and stuff like that so that's the basic premise of the story um reading it i got a lot of vibes of saga you know, but the first comic book book club that we had uh, ever, mm, they yeah. have this kid kind of on like, and they don't know what to do with it. And it's just like their adventures with this new baby. That's, you know, but I liked it. I, with the new character that got introduced in the fifth issue, I might continue it. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Okay. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to finish that, uh, fifth issue and see what this character is. And uh, decide from there. Yeah. Uh, baby Teeth. We read issues one through five. But since this is the, the year-end spectacular, um, of all the comic book book club suggestions that we have read this year, which one did you like the most? Well, I, here, here is what my suggestion was going to be. No, no, no. Um, no. You, you still get a suggestion because it's your week. Well, no, I, I was going to say, <laughs> instead of doing a suggestion and doing uh, and, and talking about a book um, next show, we talk about when we have Zach on, which one was our favorite throughout the whole time. Uh, you know what? If Zach's going to miss the year-end spectacular, then he doesn't get to come back later and put in his choices, you know? <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. Um, if you want to wait for Zachary, then uh... no, I, I, I want to wait for Zach because I, I, I think um, giving our opinions on what our favorite, like whether it was one of the ones we picked or something that somebody else suggested, like that we got something new. Because I know there was a few times I threw out um, just random. I was like, I've never even heard of this. Let's pick this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you did that a couple times. You, you guys were like, fuck. Like the wake? <laughs> yeah, I, that started off good. It, it had a real, um, like, the thing kind of feel to mm -hmm. it. You know, I, I liked it. But once it got off of that first arc and it went into something else, I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> right. But, I think I think we finish and then we start, we start the year off with just the... Uh, what our favorite was from this past year, and then we just start fresh from um, our next show. All right, fine. We'll fucking do that next week. We'll talk to Zach, you know, pending he can actually, you know, grace us with his presence. Hey, um, man. You're going to defend the guy who shits on Superman all the time? No, I'm just saying, I'm going hey, to say all the things that he's fucked and given you shit for over this year. And then you're going to be like, you know what? Fuck that guy. <laughs> well, I say fuck that guy all the time. No, I know. I know. But him not being here is like the only time we can talk shit on him. But, but Zach, Zach, I mean, it, it's actually been pretty peaceful. We all, we've been able to speak and not have to like 
you know, sit here and wait 20 minutes while he, like, catches a breath. <laughs> he rants about something. What the fuck? <laughs> and then you piss him off by bringing up the fact that he's not letting anybody else speak, and then he rants even more on something <laughs> totally unrelated. <laughs> and that dude, like, I don't know. I think he's had practice, like, because he's able to say something, take a breath, and not miss a beat and still talk, so you can't cut in. Yeah. yeah so that dude's like, fuck you, fuck this, fuck and that yesterday. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. You can't fit a word in edgewise with that guy. <laughs> it's like Jay and Silent Bob with the two of you guys. I'm just sitting here watching it all unfold. He's just fucking, there's my fourth Kevin Smith reference for the show. But yeah, he just goes off like uh, Jay. He's like, bickety bam, motherfucker. How would you write And then you're just like, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, he, he, he's the Jay and we're the silent bobs. I'm more, <laughs> more the silent bob because I'll sit here and go to say something. And you guys are like, bo -bo, and I'm like, okay, they're talking. Yeah. I'll just sit back and I'm like, cool. We hear you grunt and we know you're still there breathing yeah, in the microphone. Every, you know. every once in a while, I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, so for comic book, book club, it's your choice. What do you got for next week? We'll, we'll let Zach know so he can read it. Well, I was going to say, instead of actually having a comic book for next week, we just talk about the year-end and then start fresh. Okay, so don't read nothing. Right. Nope. I would just... Well, I would I'm already reading stuff on my own, but yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm saying instead of actually picking one that we actually have to, you know, let's just talk about the uh, likes and don't likes, and if we continued on, which ones we did, which ones we didn't. Okay. And then we start fresh... Uh, Next week, or yeah, next show, New Year. Yeah, sounds good to me. And uh, we may or may not, we're still trying to get it all scheduled and figured out, uh, have our first guest on the Yeah. So we ain't going to reveal nothing now because this is one of those things we're going to make you wait and reveal it so that you guys can time. Because <laughs> we ain't got much else to fucking fling at you for... Uh, you know, enticing you to come back, other than the velvety tones of our voices. Velvet. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But, you got any uh, New Year's resolutions? I actually got a lot. Um, you to give up smoking? Yep. Really? Um, oh, shit. Yep. Um, th there's a lot of things. Uh, this year hasn't been, uh, you know... Speaking of earlier, like, I have lung issues, and, yeah, I'm a smoker. Um, so when I do have my um, issues, I and people are like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't feel sorry. I bring it on myself, dude. Like, <laughs> I know what I got, and I smoke, okay? Um, so that, that's my thing. So don't don't feel sorry or, or, or feel sad for me because it, it's I'm doing it to myself. But um, smoking is one of the things I'm going to stop because uh, – it is more often recently that I've been having um, issues. So back in uh, March, um, there's two weeks, um, separate weeks, uh, um, that I was out for a week where, like, I couldn't breathe. Like, I was on an oxygen machine. I still have an oxygen machine um, for emergencies. Um, but it's like... Smoking's not helping. Yeah. And um, I guess right now, <laughs> part of the big problem is, um, like, my smoking is more stress-related. Like, uh, if I'm stressing or something, that's when I smoke. Yeah. That's like, I can, sit, with a lot I can sit around for hours and not have a cigarette. Um, but lately, with everything going on, it's like... When 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 am I not smoking? I don't smoke as much as I'm making it sound, but it's like it's not helpful. And you know, if I'm getting lung issues and I'm having breathing problems or whatever problems more often now, mm -hmm. then I need to quit smoking. So yeah. I'm going to quit smoking. I bought me a bicycle um, here not too long ago. Um, that I'm going to start writing a lot to help um, drop some of the poundage that I've gained. Um, <clears throat> once I 
drop enough poundage to, um, I, I, I guess say not feel like my back or my knees are about to blow. Hmm. Um, I'm going to try to find some regular routine of an exercise regimen and, you know, hopefully, you know, slim down, bulk up and, uh, be healthy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you take all that money that you spend on cigarettes and you put it in a jar or something in like three months, you could get yourself like a lot of crack. A lot of crack? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, maybe some her on. How about a couple uh, hookers? Oh, hookers and blow. Who have a hooker and blow party after three months of not smoking? Just okay, put that the, money in a jar. So the hookers and blow will start helping with my weight problem too, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You put one of them on top of you and just it, bounce them around, but like it, do crunches while they're up there, and you know. It'll is help. that my is that my workout regimen? Now? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Literally picking up hookers. <laughs> But no, it's definitely uh, that New Year's resolution. Uh, here's the thing. I'm not going to call it a New Year's resolution because I, I hate when people say New Year's resolutions. Because, new Year, New You. Yeah, they're putting yeah. themselves they're putting <laughs> themselves in a, a predicament like, oh, oh, I'm going to change the way I do this. And then when you don't. Yeah, and then you feel bad about everything. I'm just saying it, it's... Yes, I am saying a new year, new me type of thing. But what I'm saying is we're going into a new year. I need to get myself healthy because if this new year is anything like this last year. Oh, yeah. I I, I mean, right now, if we had a zombie apocalypse, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you think about it from that point of view, yeah. Like, I here's, guess so. here's, here's what I want to do for you guys. Yes, I want to be part of your um, your survival pack. Mm -hmm. But that that is only because while you guys are running, I can fall and the zombies will get me while you guys continue on. I will sacrifice myself. <laughs> nice. Well, you're definitely in my survival group. We'll, we'll uh, you know. That's all I'm there for, buddy. That's all I'm there for. <laughs> it's very valiant of you, sir. <laughs> At that point, if we had a zombie apocalypse right now, I would say fuck not smoking, fuck not drinking. I would literally be smoking a cigarette every time one went out. I'd light up another one because guess what? It's the end of the fucking world. <laughs> you just sit there at the front door with a bottle of Jack in your hand and a cigarette between your fingers and you're just like, you hear a pounding. You're like, come on, motherfuckers, let's right. do this. <laughs> yeah, because if it happens, I have no time to get myself in shape to keep myself from getting fucking killed. Might as well just fucking go out with a bang, dude. I'd be that guy that would strap the fucking dynamite on myself, have the wick right by my face while I'm smoking a cigarette, drinking the Jack out of the bottle, and be like, you want some, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Come get like me, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, then, yes, you can definitely be on my team. <laughs> and then I, I blow up. I only take out ten zombies, but it, like, fucking brings a uh, thousand zombies awareness to where you're at. But, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And the sound of it, we're running in the opposite direction, so it's okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, that's good. I mean... I didn't know that Smokey was actually going to be one of them, so that's cool. Yeah, it's uh, smoking, losing weight, and uh, becoming healthier, hopefully. Yeah. Or I quit smoking and I die, but you know, hey. Well, it just remember, when you quit smoking, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oh, so I know. Everyone I know. that quits smoking, they pack on more pounds. They have all these lung problems because they're, they're, they're healing. And you get all that shit up out of your system, and then you start dropping weight, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck? But, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway. <laughs> so, well, that's good. I mean, at least you got that going for you. <laughs> yeah. What about you? I'm going to try and lose some weight, like always. You know, try to walk more, get some cardio up. Especially being pinned indoors for so long, you know, I kind of need it. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm going to, well, I'm always going to try to, but I'm going to do my best this year to finish a book, one of the books that I started writing, you know. So buckle down and throw in a f couple of pages a day. 
I can get one of these damn books finished. Nice. Um, but, you know, this time next year we'll be talking about me trying to do the same shit, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> I, I, as I'm sitting here going, yeah, I'm going to try to quit smoking this year. Yeah. New Year's resolutions, man. I mean, I'm going to put in an effort. Don't, I mean, it, it's not like a resolution. It's just the beginning of a new year is a good start point for something, you know. But guess what? You know what? We know it's going to be a good year for doing this again next year at this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know. So, yeah. Hopefully we get some shit taken care of this year. I just, I want to wrestle again. I, you know, I'm missing the shit out of that. Oh, yeah. I, there's there's stuff like that. But I'm not going to say what's my goal for this year, try to wrestle again. It, it's not going to happen until things fucking, <laughs> we have no control over that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so here's another one. What are you going to do with your 600 bucks? Woo! Um, <laughs> Buy some hookers and blow. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> hookers and blow. Oh, no. Um, actually, I, I've kind of already spent my 600. Oh, uh, okay. Well, no, I went out and I, I got a new laptop. I, I bought a, a Levion Legion. Oh, shit. Um, it, 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 what I was looking at, I was looking at gaming computers, and it was... Uh, Eight hundred and ninety nine dollar uh, laptop on sale for like four or something. Oh shit! Yeah, I it's was like, bad. I was like, bam! I got it. It's it's not like a top of the line gaming system, but um, it's uh, I guess you say going to be good enough. I mean, it has the built in fans and all that good stuff, like the uh, you know. So I um, kind of already spent it. Um, prior to getting it <laughs> yeah that's that's the thing with me it's you know the money is going to pay off shit that's been incurred over the year you know right i've already bought everything it's just now i gotta pay it off <laughs> yeah i so i mean that's cool I, I, and so the 600 is supposed to be just a uh a beginning or something like that i don't know what there's i I just wait till it happens. I don't try to pay attention because every time you hear, oh, we're going to get $600. Oh, somebody's not going to sign it. Oh, now they're talking about $2,000. Oh, nope. They're only going to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Don't you love it? <laughs> and at the same time, like, I'm, I'm not hurting any more than I've already hurt even before this pandemic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you're still so, working, so yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm still working. I'm not hurting any any more than during this pandemic. So like, I'm not. This isn't one of those like, oh, I need this, I need this. Um, it, it's. I get tired of hearing people out there. Um, oh my god, I need. I I haven't got my twelve hundred dollars yet. I need my twelve hundred dollars. But they're the same people that are out buying um, fucking hookers and blow. Hookers and blow, um, <laughs> uh, or the fucking um, iPhone tablet things. Oh, I just bought the new iPhone, blah 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 blah, something kickstand plus twenty two thousand or something like that. Um, yeah. You know, and they sit there and they bitch and they're bitching that oh, they're only giving us uh, twelve hundred dollars with people out there. Well, you're sitting here talking about how you're buying unnecessary things with money that's supposed to help you out, like. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, true enough. I mean... There's I'm people just... out there who actually need it, and but you don't hear them bitching. They're, they're, they're waiting to get it. They get it. And they're like, okay. Yeah, they might bitch about like, yeah, $600 ain't much. But they're also the ones that have the right to bitch about it because they're the ones that are like getting ready to lose their home as soon as like the... Uh, the statue of whatever that fucking thing was called where they don't, they can't get evicted for, um, rent. Oh, but they yeah. have, they have six months to pay it at a certain point. You know, they're the ones that have the right to bitch about like, yeah, we're only getting 600 bucks. Fuck. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, I don't, I can't think of a single place out here that's charges 600 bucks for rent. Right. That won't even help somebody out for a month's rent, you know? No. And it's, but this whole thing, <laughs> This whole thing kind of taught you um, how people th think and and take care of themselves throughout these things. As soon as they heard that they couldn't be evicted for rent, you know how many people I know personally like literally stopped paying rent and partied all the time. 
Yeah. And... They just started partying, and it's like, you look at them, and you're like, yo, you do know you have to pay back what yeah. you didn't pay. Uh, They're not that, saying that's that you... That's when you move out. <laughs> After this shit's over, they'll just fucking leave wherever they're at. Like, all right, peace out. They're like, you're not riding free from this point on. Once this gets kicked back, you have to pay it back. And then when I, I didn't think they were going to just say six months. Six months, I was like, wow. Yeah. Because not only is it six months for all the back rent, it's six months and current rent. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to keep going with the current rent while you're paying the back stuff if things turn around. So it's it's going to be a big pain in the ass for a lot of people. But yeah. Yeah. Crazy shit. It's been one hell of a fucking year. And, uh, hookers and blow. Hookers and blow. It makes everything better. <laughs> but uh, here's to a, a new year. Here's to uh, being able to go back outside and Cyberpunk 2077 patches, and mm -hmm. uh, what else are you hopeful for in the next year? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just hopeful that this next year we can either um, move on and and readapt to what we have to deal with, or what we have to deal with goes away and we go back to somewhat normalcy because. I want my outings. I want to see my friends. I want to wrestle. I want my movie theaters. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to be able to walk in the store and not have to wait outside for 30 minutes while six people shop. Yeah. That's another pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like, screw you. Screw this. Uh, it's just... Uh, Let's see what happens. I, I, I say as long as we stick together and don't like turn on each other, next year should be halfway decent because we've already lived through the horror. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully this it, is, we're on the downside now. Unless it gets worse because, I mean, you know, the zombie apocalypse isn't that unreal from happening. I mean, it usually starts with a vaccine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it'll be interesting to see what the future holds. So, But for you, the fans, we will do everything in our power to bring you a weekly show about us talking about stupid bullshit to hopefully raise your spirits and keep you informed of news about stupid bullshit. So. <laughs> and, and don't worry, next week, Zach will be back. Uh, this is going to be the lowest rated show, I'm sure, but... A little, yeah. little known fact, this was what the original show was going to be, just me and V, because uh, our tag team name was The Dark Asylum, but Zach weaseled his way in there and then made himself a star. <laughs> oh, isn't that so true? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, no, see, the thing was, is I wanted to do a podcast from, you know, for a while before the, the pandemic and everything else. I wanted it to be you and me, and you're like, I could never get you fucking motivated enough to do it, or we could never hammer it down, or anything like that. Yeah, it wasn't motivation, it was trying to get the right moment, right time, and the, the first week, uh, I ended up having something to do, but uh, it was funny, because we actually set a time, and we were getting ready to do it, and um, Zach messages me, or, or we are at a show... I don't know, but he brought up the Darkest Island podcast, and he's like, why is this the first time I'm hearing of this? Uh, because yeah. we weren't going to invite you. <laughs> oh, see, no, no, okay, here's the thing. I mean, all honesty, it was going to be you and me, because we'd always talked about doing it on our car rides to the shows and stuff, uh -huh. but I thought Zach was already involved with another podcast, so I had thought that, you know, he was already involved with something else, right. and he wouldn't have time for our stupid shit. But then I, he heard about it, and he's like, whoa, why didn't I heard about this? I'm like, I thought you were doing one already. He's like, no, no, I haven't. But uh, <laughs> if V's not getting on board, let me be a part of it, and I'll get his ass motivated. I'll, I'll fucking pester the shit out of him, and I'll harp on him, and I'll nag him, and I'll get him fucking going. And not a fucking week later, here we are making the first fucking show. <laughs> well, I was, joking, I was joking when I said because you weren't invited. It was just, uh, <clears throat> I, he goes... Why haven't I heard about this? I want to be a part of it. I'm like, talk to darkness. Like, I'm I'm cool with it. Like, 
you know, and I didn't know where you were with it because it, we were just talking about you and I. Um, yeah. But I was like, I'm cool with it. And next thing I know, boom, the Dark Asylum uh, group chat was up. And I was like, All right, I guess he's in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's a part of it because, like, you know, not that this show is going to be fucking the shits or anything, but, you know, it's good to have that third person in there. And, man, if I run out of shit to talk about, he is right fucking there to give us more than enough fucking content to talk about. Well, <laughs> we, it's, you know, unfortunately, we set a, a, a high bar bringing Zach on. So, like, we, we can never... Like if Zach leaves us, it's like the band broke up and we're going to like we're we're going to die. I'm joking. We can we can <laughs> still do it, but it's it's like that. Zach sets such a high bar because he is he's very um, in your face. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I love about the dude. He's just like fuck you, fuck this, peace. I'm out. And <laughs> you're like, uh, sorry. See you next week. <laughs> you, you you know we're 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 more the like. He didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why Zach is the one that will throw the door back open? Fuck you! Shut your mouth! I meant it. Fuck you! I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. like that—that's Zach for you. And that's the thing. He's the. Uh, we're all funny in our ways, but he's just like that dude comes up with some like off the wall shit. Oh yeah. Like the uh, the Mel Gibson comment. Or the uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised we're still going with half of this shit that we get away with on this show, right? Uh, I guess it helps that no one listens, so you know. No, I love it, and I, I don't mean that because people do listen, which you know is astounding to me. I love I love this little ragtag group that we have going on. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, sometimes I do wish um, things were different with um, another individual, and, and we could have had that person with us um and it's like we've always we're just doing what we do in the locker room we're, we're having our conversations and it, it's amusing it's fun yeah i i can't wait we, we need to get this together if we get wrestling going up again is to get Zach, you and I in pause van recording on our way out to fucking to a uh, power pit pro wrestling. <laughs> oh the Jesus! Shit that we talk about. <laughs> all, 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 all in the background. You're going to hear. <laughs> fuck you guys! <laughs> fuck, fuck, just, fuck! <laughs> just an hour and a half of us fucking antagonizing this shit out of paw. <laughs> That'll be our YouTube show, showing him fucking gum and fries and everything else. And Zach just giving him so much shit that he looks like he's going to lose his fucking mind and just beat the shit out of him right there. <laughs> hey, Paul, we need you to wear this mic while you eat your food. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, like I say, hopefully this shit lets up a little bit and we can do some new things for the show and all that. Like I say, we got a guest hopefully coming up. and Yeah. That'll be interesting, because I ain't never done that before on this podcast, and, you know. So, cool, cool. Oh, um, that's going to be crazy, though. Four people on the same. Yeah. It, well, like I said, we'll see how it goes, man. It should uh, be interesting. Do you have the capability of muting people's mics? Um, let me see. No. I can uh, see all of your... Uh, no, not from the program I'm using. <laughs> Damn. Oh, maybe. Hold on. Nope. <laughs> I was going to say you might have to uh, mute Zach every. No, wait, I can. Oh, <laughs> go ahead and start talking. Hello. No, count to ten. One, two. Okay, so I, I just muted him. This is awesome. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I have the ability to mute people. <laughs> you, you can mute people. I tell you, I just figured it out. Gosh, man, this is going to be something. <laughs> so next time you go on some coughing fit, I'll be like, right, hold on one second. Click, and he's out. All right. <laughs> yeah. Just don't forget about me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's been about five minutes. He should be over it now. <laughs> but, well, um... I, 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 all my shit's crossed off the list. I got nothing else to go over. Yeah, I didn't really have a lot this week either. Um, 
sat around trashing Wonder Woman for a fucking hour and a half. So yeah, <laughs> well, other than uh, you know some of the Robert Patterson issues with the Batman movie is uh, he feels he's being overworked. Oh yeah, but other than that, I we're going to go into next year, uh, you know, bigger, stronger, with a lot more um, news and. We got a lot of shit coming out in 2021, hopefully. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have a year to wait for The Mandalorian. Yeah, that's um, going to suck. That's, we, but we're going to get a bunch of other shit shoved in there, though, so we'll see how it goes, Star Wars-wise and Marvel. We're going, yeah, we're going to get The Mandalorian and The, the Book of Fett uh, during Christmas or December of 2021. Yeah, and we're going to get Rogue Squadron, and we're going to get Obi-Wan, and we're going to get, you know, all this other shit up until then. Oh, yeah. So, we'll have plenty Ooh, to yeah. keep us ready. The boys will come back, and... Oh, you know. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll be good. So, real quick, the Sign Guy question of the week. What's the closest you've ever come to punching Sign Guy? That's his own question from him. How close have I come to punching sign? To I think punching I, sign guy. I think I've punched sign guy. That's what I was thinking too. I think I legit punched him. Um, yeah, like I think it was a spot in the match where he would knock out the ref. <laughs> so yeah, I punched sign guy before in a match. I don't. I can't recall. He's the encyclopedia when it comes to this shit. He just told me today about a show that I did that I don't remember doing. Uh, was it the? Uh... Uh, total dudes. Total, total yeah. What? Yeah. What the fuck was that? I don't remember that. He sent me the link to it now, and I gotta go back and and listen. I, I I did an episode with him on that once, and I was like, "What the fuck did you make me watch, dude?" Um, uh, totally, totally dudes watching totally divas or something like that. Yeah. And I, uh, he's telling me about shit that happened, and I'm like, "That was me." Like, touching Big B's junk or something. I'm like, what? What the hell is he going on what? about? But yeah, as he wrote to me. He's like, uh, uh, what did he say? Uh, yeah, we had V on, and you came on about 50 minutes in when we started talking about your hand on V's junk, hypothetically, like how Nikki was feeling up her sister. I was like, what the hell is this? I don't remember. Oh, wow. But huh. yeah, and then, you know, it, it, he said it was the total dudes. It's right after I bashed his skull with skull. So, but yeah, I, so I, yeah, I have legitimately hit him with the damn skull. <laughs> but so there, that's the time I came closest to hitting him. I actually hit him with my skull, not my skull, but a skull that is mine. You see, I will say anytime I do his, uh, his podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, um, <laughs> um, I think anytime I go on that show, um, there's not a point where I don't want to hit him or, uh, <laughs> the closest uh, I come to hitting him is every time I see him. <laughs> no, uh, I, I love fucking sign. You, know, you, you, <laughs> you call it, call it the turnbuckle turmoil and it's like. Oh, you're asking me this shit because you're a million miles away and you know I can't touch you. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Every time I've been on the show, it's been interesting because, like, the first time I had to sneak away from work, go sit in my car and do the interview. And then the, the time after that, I w it was after I broke my leg. I was in Georgia doing some training for work. And that's when you, like, called in and you start talking shit. And then the time after that, it was, uh, I had to do, he interviewed Skull, not me. So yeah, that was an interesting one too. But. Oh yeah, we had the, uh, the Bob interview. I, I, yeah. No, um, it, it's, it's always a blast doing the show, uh, Turbo Turmoil with, uh, you know, Sign Guy and QT gets on there and, um, man, they, they, they throw some fucking curveballs at you, man. They're, they're good at their job. Yeah. They they know how to run they know how to run a podcast, man, because they they get you going. It's like, huh? And yeah. they're like throwing things at you, like, huh? It it sucks because I came out here and I'm not very well versed in Portland wrestling history. 
and he's throwing names out at me. I'm like, uh, I don't know who that is. And I feel awkward as shit because I have like, he's like, word association. I'm like, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> and I feel like crap because it's like, these guys are, I'm supposed to know them and I don't, but you know. But yeah, they have ways of throwing curveballs at you and you're just like, what the fuck? I remember there was a question one time about a horse or something. And I'm like, I, I have no idea how to fucking answer this, but you know. It's always fun, though. It's always good for a laugh, so. And Sun Guy is, a, like I said, a fucking encyclopedia of wrestling knowledge. I love Sun Guy. Yeah. He's, he's, I, he's I love fun. giving him shit, too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love giving him shit. Uh, so, you guys out there, you know, uh, uh, Turnbuckle Turmoil. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good uh, wrestling podcast to listen to. Yep. I might see about having him on here, but I don't know how him and Zach would, would gel. Zach would just fucking go after him about everything. <laughs> you got the power of the mutes. That's true. I just figured this out. I have the power. I feel like fucking He-Man right now. Just putting my sword up to the sky in front of that castle. Right? I have the power. How awesome was that He-Man movie, though, from the 80s? Uh... Dolph Lundgren <laughs> is a god. Anyway. <laughs> You, you you do know you're right up the street from me, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. But I, I've uh, I've been really into cyberpunk lately because of the game. I went back and I watched uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking Dolph Lundgren was the priest. Uh... <laughs> that guy was awesome. I love Dolph Lundgren. The best I'm... Punisher. But uh, keep talking <laughs> shit, bro. Keep talking shit. I will fucking drive up that hill. Go up your steps, kick in your door, cough into your door, and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> what was that noise? Uh, it's just Big V. It's fine. <laughs> he may or may not have COVID-19. Yeah, he's probably got COVID-20. as much exposure as he has out there in the real world. I got COVID-32.5. And the scumbags you come into contact with, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, um... Yeah, we should bring Sun Guy on sometime. Sun Guy, you know. yeah, yeah. Like I said, we'll, you, we'll see how this if, first interview goes. We'll see if how you're we... listening. If you're listening, which you probably are, um, let's see about bringing you on. Now, don't don't get all excited because that's not a promise. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this first uh, first time with a person on works out, and see how well the mute button works on Darkness's end, and uh, yeah. 2021, we might be bringing Sign Guy on to uh, the Dark Asylum. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I can I can see it now after this episode drops and Zach has a chance to listen to it. No, no fucking way. I can see the text messages coming through already. <laughs> We're not fucking having Sign Guy on the show. Yeah, no. He's no, like, I'm just he's kidding. Like, <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? No Sign Guy. Nope, nope. If you want to bring Sign Guy on here, I'm fucking leaving. I'm putting my, I'm, I'm putting my fucking mic in the fridge, and I'm leaving. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, so we'll see. We're gonna get some shit together for the new year, and maybe a drunk show, maybe a, a couple of uh, haunting shows, and you know, depending on how things go. So we got that to look forward to, and. Uh, yeah, you always get your nerd news and geek culture and whatever the hell else you want to call it. So, sounds yeah. good to me, man. Oh, yeah. So, I guess that's it then, huh? It's the last episode of the year? Last episode of the year. We... Happy New Year, everybody. Make the next year a great one because, I mean, you can't do pretty much any worse than this one. Right. Happy New Year's. Uh, be healthy. Be strong. You know, um... And just remember, if ever in a time of need, if you need to reach out to somebody, reach out to somebody. Don't don't let your pride get in the way. Uh, you know, at this time, we all need to stick together and help each other out. Um, mm -hmm. Except except for Darkness and Zach. Y'all can fuck off and um, do your own thing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, check us out. We got Facebooks. We got uh, Twitters. We got at Dark Asylum Pod. Uh, you can reach all of us individually at our uh, Darkness uh, or Darkness. You can find on Facebook. 
Let me let me imitate Zach. Go buy my T-shirts from T-shirt T. What, what is it? T-shirt Tees or something? Uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. He's got one on. There. Go go buy my shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. It's the greatest shirt that ever lived. If you don't have one, then your mom is a whore. Yeah, man, that's pretty much it. If you go on Am- <laughs> if you go on Amazon and you type in Dark Designs, you can find all the shirts that I made. Oh fuck Both that! It's, fuck that! It's not my, and, it's not my oh, shirt though. Yeah, it's not yeah. my shirt. All right, so, uh, all right. <laughs> pro T Pro T shirts by the wonderful wonderful Zach's Lick Dicks shirts, and, uh, <laughs> and and you won't be you you'll get laid. You will wear a shirt, you'll get laid. There you go. That's straight from Zach himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, so yes, buy my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Please buy our product. All right, so for Big Vicious, that's me. I am Darkness, and the asylum is closed for the rest of the year.